Hi, and welcome to another episode of The Art of Engineering. In today's episode, we're going to be discussing project enclosures. And the title of today's video is Thinking Outside of the Box. Now, a lot of the time when we're building a homebrew project, one of the biggest expenses is the actual enclosure, the box we're going to put it in. Quite often, it's cheaper to buy some junk from overseas than to actually build it yourself. And this is largely because of that cost. So I'm gonna show you a few options that may assist you in the process of building your homebrew project. Option number one. Now, option number one is quite often, uh, if you do buy a kit, uh, you will be offered a box with the kit. This is my Oz QRP kit. It's a 40 meter kit. I bought the 40 and the 80 meter kit. Unfortunately, I blew the 80 meter kit up. Uh, it's been a great little workhorse in my shack and it's QRP and does about five watts, double sideband and also CW. And it comes in a plastic box. And a lot of kits come in these, I guess they're a bit like the old um, Dick Smith zippy boxes. And there's nothing wrong with this type of box. But for RF, it's always nice to have something that's metal, I think, give it a bit more shielding and whatnot. So this is uh, a good case. And if the kit is offering a case that's purpose-built for it and it's a reasonable price, or the whole kit as a whole is a reasonable price, go with what you're uh, offered. That's one option. So that's option one. Now, option number two is definitely thinking more outside of the box or maybe in the box, as the case may be. Now, this is my a chocolate box receiver. It's a direct conversion receiver and it's built in an old chocolate box that my grandmother left me. So it has a, a bit of sentimental value and it's repurposing something that probably originally would have gone in the trash. And it's, you know, it's got some lovely details on it, some uh, painted flowers. Well, not actually hand painted on the box, but they're hand painted artworks created for the box. And there's a certain amount of charm in that sort of thing. So I think that's a really nice, uh, way of honoring an object that you have that you might want to give a new life. And this is my moon cake transmitter. And as you can see, it is in a moon cake tin. So when uh, moon cake season comes around, rather than chucking that tin away, you can use it to build yourself a transmitter or a receiver or even, hey, why not use it for a dummy load? Now this is a, uh, an old money box that my grandmother left me. And as you can see there, uh, I've managed to build myself a nice little dummy load in that. And that served me well for when I was building kits. A quick note about all of this stuff that I've just been talking about. If you pop down the bottom in the description of this video, there's a hand playlist and there's a description of all of these things that I've built over the last probably 12 months. When I started here, the station that you see behind me did not exist. I had no equipment whatsoever. And in the brief 12 months that I've been completely and utterly obsessed with all things that are ham radio, this is what's happened. Uh, so the homebrew thing has really taken off with me. So we've so far, we've looked at option one, which is using the uh, box that the kit might come with or something that you buy off the shelf. Like I said, quite often, if you want to buy a metal box, they're really expensive. Um, option number two is repurposing a tin. Now I've got uh, a pile of those somewhere in the shack that I've just put aside. Whenever I see a t an empty tin can or tin box that can be used for a, a project, I put it aside. Now I'm gonna show you something that I'm really excited about. This is my magic box. And the magic box is going to be a way of selecting uh, between rigs and antennas and these lights will come on telling me what rig I have or what antenna that I have. It also has a software defined radio uh, bypass in it so that when I'm um, transmitting uh, this little light that I'm pointing to here will come on and it will ground the antenna to the SDR uh, discovery that I've got. So I can use that as a pan adapter and I'm going to have a dedicated receive antenna on that SDR loop on the ground video to come. And that is the back of it. You can see I've got a choice of six rigs, six antennas, and the through for the SDR radio. I'm, I've, I've got this wired up. This will be a, an upcoming video 
probably a long play one where you'll actually get to see me building this. But uh, as you can see inside, uh, I've used some AliExpress uh, switching circuits that you can buy, two of those. Um, I've done an ugly build on the SDR section of this uh, that I'm currently working on on the bench. And I'm just having the time of my life nerding it really hard and home brewing. But this is a toolbox that uh, I got from uh, Bunnings. And I went and I looked at the $11 toolbox. And of course, that was the bait and switch. Online, they had $11 toolboxes. I checked if they were in store. Of course, they were in stock. They're always in stock until you get there. And then they're just very vague about uh, this $11 toolbox that you cannot find anywhere in Sydney. So they, I had to go up in value. Hey, $14. Not a huge difference. But the, uh, the other toolbox I was looking for was about um, that much shorter. And I was only going to put one of those circuits in and I was going to use um, the antenna choices on my new ATU. But um, when I was given this extra real estate, I thought, hey, why not put two boards in and really go for broke and give myself future uh, real estate when it comes to rigs that I plug in and also antennas. So this is an upcoming video. If you want to be notified of this, hit the notification bell. Please hit like and subscribe and you'll get lots more of this content. Okay, folks, another option uh, if you're in the market for an enclosure, this will be option number three. And that's head off to the uh, Crazy Bargain store or Hot Dollar or whatever the thrift store in your country of origin is and start looking at the things that you can see on the shelf and thinking to yourself, can I make an RF enclosure out of what I'm looking at? And I was on my way through the Crazy Dollar store and I saw this cash box. It's metal, it's solid, it weighs a ton. I put some feet on the bottom of it. This once again is a video, so if you want to see how I made this audio filter, my Kenwood TS520 doesn't have the CW filter in it, and it's very hard to get. So I made this in an old cash box, lockable cash, cash box. Uh, it's got a key here in the front, so you can open it up, which is quite a cute thing. And you open it, and you can see in here, that's the ugly build that I've done on it. And it's made with uh, operational amplifiers, something that I played around with in my first year of my engineering degree that I just completed, or the year of engineering that I completed. I did about a year and a half and I decided uh, that was enough. Um, I wanted to play ham radio. So this is the filter and it's in a cash box, $11. Try and buy a, uh, an enclosure for a ham project this size that's gonna cost you $11 that is this solid. I mean, it is rugged and uh, really nice and retro, beautiful shape, and I think very, very easy to put a project into. Now, I love that cash box enclosure so much, I went back to the store to see if I could pick up another one. In fact, if I had four or five there, I probably would have bought them all. But unfortunately, by the time I got back there, they were all gone. Maybe another ham cat turned up and got the same idea that I did. They were all gone, and uh, so I was, quite sad about that but I thought I'll keep my eye out and when I see something similar I'll grab it well uh, this is available in big W it's by no means the same size it is tiny and probably cost me about the same amount so you can see what a bargain that uh, that last case was but still 11 bucks for this I thought um, what a great enclosure to put a QRP transmitter in and I'm thinking or transceiver I'm thinking of putting the uh, 49er in there with a DDS VFO so that will be an upcoming video as well. I've got lots of upcoming videos. So remember, hit the notification bell. Now, option number four. What is option number four? Option number four is looking for old electronics that's been thrown away. You know, walk around on a council cleanup. If you've been watching the channel and the content on this channel, I spent a good deal of time really obsessing about microwave ovens. And I was collecting them whenever I saw them because I wanted to build myself a linear 20 amp power supply for the shack and I wanted to rewind microwave transformers. So I did two videos on that process of rewinding those transformers and I was told by people, a lot of people said, don't do it. And in some respects, they were correct in their uh, assertions that the actual transformers are not purpose built for that type of 
current and uh, they run at high saturation, they're very inefficient, etc., etc. But the question mark in my head is always there and I always like the challenge of trying to repurpose something, even if it goes to the point where it's almost ridiculous the amount of time it takes me. At any rate, did two videos, load testing those transformers. In the end, what I did was I took two of the transformers and I put the actual primary coils in series and that lowered the magnetizing current. And I was able to build that actual power supply. And there's a video of that completed power supply. And I'll show you that power supply now because it is built in an old PC case. And this is my Steampunk 20 amp power supply. Now I've actually load tested this to 24 amps. Don't ask me what the ripples are like and all that sort of stuff. I actually don't know. But I do know that it's been very reliable for the last few months, providing power to the shack. I haven't had any problems with it. And it is built in an old PC case. So this is a great option if you want to save money is just go out on garbage collection day and look for old electronics that has nice cases and they're usually metal and you can you can use those cases or repurpose those cases for your own homebrew projects. And uh, as you can see here, it switches on nicely. Uh, this is an AliExpress current shunt and uh, voltage meter that comes with it. And one of the benefits of this case was that uh, because I was a little bit worried about the transformers running hot, I thought it'd be really nice to have a fan. Well, PC cases come with a fan already installed. Now, this little LED comes on if it overheats and it has a heat sensing circuit that I built using a FET uh, and a thermistor. And basically, if it gets too hot, if the transformers get too hot, the fan will switch on. Um, it hasn't needed those fans thus far. I'm not running it at high current because I'm normally QRP, but it's been very reliable. And if I decide I really do want to run QRO, or I have a rig that's going to take a bit more current, I can switch the fan on and that'll keep things nice and cool. So don't ever discount the idea of taking a piece of old electronics equipment that's domestic purposes and repurposing it for your own homebrew projects. Option number five is an oldie, but a goodie. When I started in electronics back in my teens, the uh, Dick Smith fun way into electronics was a big thing. Trying to understand how electronic devices work, especially when the inside of a simple transistor radio looks like this. And all of the projects were built on a piece of board with screws and wires. We first join up the wiring. Now make sure the wire is well wrapped around the screw and under the washer when you tighten it up. The old fashioned breadboard. And the first thing that I built when I got back into the hobby, the beginning of my present uh, 12 month stint, was this L Match antenna tuner. And as you can see, this is essentially the breadboarded, uh, which is taking a piece of timber and screws, in this case, some metal brackets that I've screwed on there as well. And building it on a board. Now I will put a link to a fantastic video from Peter Parker. We're not worthy! We're not worthy! The person who has really got me uh, inspired to come back into the hobby, fantastic YouTube channel, and he builds a transmitter using I think it's one or two transistors on a breadboard, as in a plastic breadboard with screws and wires. So you can use timber, you can use a plastic cutting board. Really the sky's the limit for this type of work. You can also ugly build on a piece of circuit board or vero board and mount that on here or mount that. Uh, if you've got a piece of um, copper uh, unetched circuit board material, PCB material, you can just build on that. And that's something that uh, Charlie Morris does on his YouTube channel. Um, I will put a link to Charlie's channel below as well. So uh, if you're looking for inspiration, for homebrew inspiration, there is so much stuff online, but certainly uh, Peter Parker and Charlie Morris, uh, fantastic ham uh, YouTubers who will give you food for thought and then you'll be on your way creating your own fantastic, crazy ideas. So that is the humble breadboard, still valid and useful even today, especially for prototyping. But uh, for QRP and stuff like that, I've used this uh, L-Match. It serves me well. 
uh, I'm a bit more ambitious now and I'm thinking I want to uh, maybe make a much better ATU, but uh, at the moment um, that's sort of been put on the back burner because I managed to get hold of this uh, beautiful Kenwood AT230 because um, it just looked like it need, needed to be best friends with my old boat anchor TS520. So I have a real soft spot for stuff that's uh, kind of probably even earlier than my vintage. This is 1970s and uh, the rigs I was using in my teens were the 1980s. So um, this was old even when I was playing with ham. Uh, that was heading into the solid state finals territory in the 1980s and uh, this uh, has uh, the tube finals. But uh, as you might know, I'm an ex-ship's RO and... <laughs> Just the whole tuning of a final stage with valves is just something that's uh, very nostalgic for me and something that I love to do. Now, if I've missed any great ideas that you may have about uh, alternatives for enclosures for homebrew, please uh, drop a comment in the comment section below. Thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. Sorry it's been such a long time between videos. I just got myself back from uh, Korea and had a great eight days in Korea. Fantastic. When I say eight days, it was like eight ATE as well because that's all we did the whole time we were there. The food was amazing. People were amazing. And um, I got myself uh, this uh, beautiful piece of bling for the shack. Didn't see a lot of uh, ham stuff around. Looked online. It doesn't seem like... Obviously, they have ham radio in South Korea, but it didn't seem to be a, a huge scene. So correct me if I'm wrong about that, but I couldn't see a lot of uh, Korean-made equipment and whatnot. Um, so if you know of any Korean-made equipment that you could give me a link to, I'd be very interested to see where where it's from and what they make and whatnot. But I uh, couldn't see a huge amount of stuff. But uh, had a really fantastic time while I was there. Thank you for sticking around right to the end of the video. It's a short one, I know. But there will be a really, really long one coming up when uh, I showcase the magic ATU switching box. And also coming up in episodes to come, a loop on the ground antenna, which I already have the parts for. So there's a huge amount of fun and exciting stuff coming up. Um, I've kept this one short and I will see you in the next, hopefully longer episode of the art of engineering. 7-3.